Episode 3 has just dropped for Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power and today we will be doing a complete breakdown plus easter egg special for the highly liked third instalment of the 8 episode season. Make sure to like and subscribe but without further ado let's get right into it. We start the episode off with Aronde who after being grabbed by the orcs when discovering the tunnels at the end of the last episode is now captured and taken to where all the other hoarded villages are imprisoned and working as slaves under the orcs but mainly Adar which means father in Sindarin. The orcs refer to this name many times at the start of the episode but then we actually see the figure they are referring to which is the character being played by Joseph Marley. So that is currently his character name so far. We also see at the camp the Watch Warden and the Elf played by Augustus Prue. Moving on, we get our first introduction to Elendil who was rightly speculated as being the character at the very end of the last episode who finds Halbrand and Gladriel out at sea. Then at last we get our grand introduction to Numenor as Galadriel explains the island kingdom to Halbrand unaware of its existence. Galadriel being an elf seems to be a massive problem in Numenor with some of the remarks made towards her when she leaves the docks which removing time compression would have been the situation in Numenor around the short reign of Miriel but mainly Arpharazon. We interestingly get a rather big lore dump by Gladriel when explaining the founding of Numenor to Halbrand, but more importantly how the Numenorians supported the elves while the Southlanders supported Morgoth, showing the difference between the different races of men. Before they are led into the throne room, we get a few seconds of Halbrand looking quite schemingly at the furnaces and the blacksmiths at work making swords and then he slightly chuckles to himself and walks on. Hopefully that is the only forging and blacksmith stuff he does. They are then introduced to Queen Regent Miriel and her advisor Chancellor Farazon, which begins just like this leak we released from ages ago with Galadriel proclaiming her lineage and we even get a Finarfin name drop her father. With Halbrand, we are starting to see the mischievous and almost thief-like nature as when he goes and hugs Elendil he takes Finrod's dagger from him and eloquently hands it back to Gladriel. One quite confusing moment was when Miriel did not know who Elendil was. Farazon explains to her that he was originally of a noble line but now a seas guardsman. This raises the question of whether or not Amundel is around in this show and the Lords of Andunai as they were pretty well known during this period of Numenor. Hopefully though, through the course of this show we will get more insight into this quite confusing nature between the characters. However, with the situation of time compression, despite still being confusing, we get a little insight into how it is working in Numenor with Miriel referencing that no elves were allowed on their shores since the ruling of her grandfather's great grandfather, which is a subtle reference to our Adunakor, the 20th king of Numenor, who banned the speaking of Quenya, which in fact still is spoken secretly in the western parts of Numenor, according to Elendil in this conversation, but still no elves came back to the island from that point on, except in secrecy from Tolerese. We also get the first mention of the faithful and the symbiotic relation to the white tree which, spoiler alert, will be quite important to Elendil and especially Sildur later on when Sildur steals a sapling. But here Elendil doesn't seem too attached or at least publicly committed to the faithful as of yet. But speaking of Isildur, we also see his first involvement being a part of the sea cadets during his training and at one point when Isildur looks out to the coast of the island, a woman's voice gently utters his name. Maybe this is a plot point that will be built throughout the show. But we also see his friends Ontimo and Volandil and as a little easter egg, one of Isildur's future sons is also named Volandil, so that is a nice little link there. Once back on land, when shouting the sea is always right, Isildur hesitates a bit, which seems to be a cause of tension between him and his father in this dinner scene 
including Iadi and the daughter of Elendil. We also get a nice Anadio name drop which confirms his existence and maybe is currently on the west side of the island as Elendil told him, quote, there is nothing for us on the western shores but maybe Anadion is still currently there. This dinner scene also shows the political shift within the family, with Isildo being excited by knowing Gladriel, quote, the Gladriel scourge of orcs, while Eriarion isn't too happy about her being here. We also see the puppet play mocking Gladriel and showing her in the throne room and also fighting a Sauron-like puppet. But we have skipped quite a bit, so let's rewind and go back on track, as after the Isildo shore scene, we go back to Arondi and Revion in the orc pits and we get some new information whereby these orcs are searching for something, some sort of weapon for their lord Adar and they are attacking these human villages in the southlands looking for it. The sword Theo found in the barn in the last episode is the obvious current contender for this weapon. We unfortunately see the death of Augustus Prue's character also confirmation that this massive tree on the map is indeed the tree Aronde cuts down and before he does he speaks to the tree and this is an emotional moment because Aronde said in episode 1 that he originally before the war was a grower. But then we see Gladriel escape the dungeon thanks to the dagger and she runs on top of the roof until she meets Elendil again and for some reason almost knifes him but then they do reconcile and Elendil surprisingly speaks elvish with Gladriel and they do both gallop off to the Tower of Law. We see the guilds of Numenor, including the blacksmith's guild from earlier, and Halbrand begs for a job as a blacksmith, but he needs a guild badge to get one, so he tries to steal one from this leader of a elf-hating group, and let's say it didn't end up too well for them, as Halbrand out of nowhere shows his immense power and might, but then the guards catch him and he gets locked up. The Tower of Law part of the episode was quite fascinating with some cool easter eggs but the main plot point here was that the Mark of Sauron isn't a sigil but a map and a sign of the Southlands and telling all the orcs to go there which we all actually guessed weeks earlier with the sign looking like the mountain range and geography of Mordor and apparently this plan was to be activated in the case of Morgoth's defeat and his next second Dark Lord to rise up to the challenge. We also learned that the Tower of Law was built by Elros himself and we even get a painting of the two on the wall with Robert Arameo as Elrond on the right and the bearded man being Elros on the left. Importantly, we also learned that Tarplanta, the old Numenorean king, was overthrown and now in exile in his own kingdom but by being lenient towards the elves and even kept this law tower from being destroyed. We cut to the Harfords where there were more intimate scenes including the speech by Sadok where a lot of Poppy Proudfellow's family members were mentioned in the list of recent deaths, three in fact. But when Meteor Man crashes the party, we get a nice little reference to Elrond's father Arendil when he mentioned knowing someone who became a star but not a fallen one. The biggest moment in shock of the episode is when we find out how Brand has the necklace for the King of the Southlands which we had early references to and hints from episode 1. However, he claims he took this off a dead man so there is still a little chance that Halbrand still isn't necessarily the King of the Southlands but currently with all available evidence he does have the necklace and he did seem quite attached to it when Galadriel was speaking. Also the carved statue that Galadriel passes in the dungeon could be Union the Lady of the Seas and the Spouse of Ose. The Numenorians loved her as you can especially see in this quote. The Numenorians lived long in her protection and held her in reverence equal to the Valar. So this could easily be a nice homage to her. We then get a lovely night shot of Numenor and then Miriel walking up to the tower which houses none other than Tarplante, the exiled king who got replaced but we don't see him until the next episode. Some rumours suggest the actor for Tarplante is Ken Blackburn but we will have to wait for the next episode to see. This seems almost like a prophecy when Miriel states father the moment we have feared the elf has arrived. A nice moment where Meteor Man volunteers to push the struggling Brandyfoot family caravan. 
finally we are back to Aronde and the elves who use sunlight to their advantage and fight off the orcs until a very puppy like warg appears and attacks them but ends up getting killed by Aronde with a spear through his chest. But so does Revion as well, similar in nature to Bodomir's death with the Mount of Arrows. Aronde is led back into the tunnel, the orcs chant Ada, 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 Ada and lo and behold he is right there but unfortunately quite blurred. We will see more of him in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching, we really appreciate it. Let us know your thoughts of episode 3 in the comments below or any easter eggs we missed. Don't forget to like and subscribe but until the next video my friends, goodbye.